Hi, Tech Rabbit here again. Cold coffee time. Okay, so I think we get to work and um, see if we can't um, install the, yeah, populate and install the motherboard in the case. But first, I'd like to show the back of the case that we're using because there's a few cables that might be of interest to look at. Of course we have the fan cables for there for powering the fans and um, controlling the rotation speed and getting a signal about the, um, the speed the fans are going at. Uh, but then we also have a bunch of other cables that are provided with the case. And I just like to go through them one by one. Okay, so we take the motherboard manual, so that I can use the correct names they also used. Let's see now. Here we go. Hold that. And let's see if I can get it into focus. And this is tricky. Trying to look at the dis the display at the same time I'm showing. It. Yeah. Anyway, here we have the description of the cables. And um, this one here is um, it's called a USB 3.0 20 pin header for motherboards. So this plugs directly into the motherboard if you have such a connection. Then we have. Um, this one here, which is actually not even described in the manual that I have for the case, but it's included. It's a USB Type-C connector for a motherboard, and I can't find a motherboard with a place for this. My motherboard doesn't have it, and I've gone through the, one, the motherboards that are available online in my region, and um, Nobody know there seems there is no such a such a socket. So this will not be I won't be able to use this until I figure out actually how, how this is supposed to be supposed to be connected. Um, then we have front panel audio. Oh, no, if it wasn't clear, these, these, uh, the, this, the USB is also for the um, front panel connection. And then we have the classical um, separate pinout. Um, let's see if I get the text the right way around. For the control features for the motherboard. And it's still exactly the same as years gone by. So you have the power LED, the one indicating the hard drive status which of course is a bit odd because it's you know if you have multiple hard drives then what meaning does that have <laughs> and then you have the power switch so this power switch act you know, when that short circuit it activates the power switch. so those are the cables we have but it's a, it's a really this I mean in general the whole so-called USB and USB standardization is such a mess I could make a very long rant video about that. I mean how can you call something a standard when you have like 20 plus options? It's, it's ridiculous. And, and here we see also the problem that manufacturers get into that okay now they provided this socket or this um, yeah, I don't know what do you call this? Short circuit in the brain. Ah this plug with nothing to plug it into because the poor manu hard motherboard manufacturers haven't had a chance to catch up and they might probably the USB standardization committee will standardize another 10 various variations of this this um, plug so that it won't work anyway even if you try and use it okay so that was the um, what I was going to review on the back side and then um, these cables will when we get the motherboard installed, go through here as appropriate. I don't know exactly know where, where, which one, I, which pass through I'll use, but we'll see when we get the motherboard in. So um, that's.
that's that part. And then I'm just going to turn the case around and um, then we can um, work on the motherboard side of things. So, now we're back on the front side of the case. And um, this motherboard comes with a back panel insert plate. And very classically, the most classical mistake is that one forgets to put this in. One screws in the motherboard and then one says, oops. And then when you want to put this in, you have to take the motherboard out again and put it in. And um, it has the basic instructions in the, in the manual. So, let's bring up the flip screen so I can see I'm showing you guys. So there's the instructions, so you insert it from the inside out. Except that back plate doesn't look like the one that's provided with the manual. Let's see if I can even make it look the same. Oh, there's too many variants, it's a generic. So this picture is for a um, generic back plate. And we're just going to have to um, make sure we put it the right way around in relation to the motherboard. Oh, and I thought that was going to be easy to <laughs> Trying to do things online. Live. Okay, now we have it out. And um, then one needs to remember to put it, to insert it the correct way around. So, um, in this case, the it's going to be inserted. big connectors down so that's the for the display. So I know that. I wonder if I should show it on the motherboard or maybe that's a little anyway, here's the here's the motherboard. Someone wants the plate to to like go on that there like that. Insert it in the correct way around, so that needs to go out, and it needs to go in there. And be careful, you could cut your fingers on this thing. Not exactly, um, you should probably use gloves. No, no, that seems to go in okay. But those edges are relatively... So, so that should be okay. It's now installed with the big connector at the bottom where the motherboard's going to go. Yeah, so, so the next stage is we are going to um, start populating the motherboard. Now there are, are um, many ways to populate a motherboard. Some people believe that one should install it in the case have it screwed in and then um, populate it and um, some people think that oh, I should build it outside and then put it in. I'm going to build it on the table or populate it on the table. But there is one thing that, I mean this case has the um, standard standoffs for ATX motherboards but um, it's probably a good idea to double check that the motherboard will actually land on those so there isn't too many or too little of these standoffs. So let's do that actually before we populate the motherboard. So let's see if it actually has a screw guide around here, but it should be. It's 
relatively obvious where the screw places are, but it would have been nice to have. Some manuals have a separate diagram where they say that, okay, they specifically show exactly where the screw holes are, where you need to have headers. And this doesn't seem to have it. More cold copy. It's alive today. And it's good to put on the anti-static strap just to make sure one doesn't blow the motherboard up with static charges, even though I've never done it before. So actually the static strap I'm only using for the benefit of this video, usually I don't use one. I've never had. I have never to date seen um, computer components die due to static discharges. They are actually quite well protected modern electronics against uh, this stuff. Okay, so this one will go like this. And there will be eight screws. One, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's see what do we have here. say about eight screws. So here we have a situation, but then I wonder if that will interfere with the instrument. So before you populate the motherboard, because now it's lighter to move around, then one should check the status of the standoffs. And as you see, this motherboard doesn't have one screw there, but it does have a standoff. And if one screws it in, then potentially one can short circuit something here underneath, because it's not meant to have, have a um, knob there. So it would be in line with those two. So it would be in that area. So it might not cause a problem immediately, but when the motherboard shakes around or you, or you transport it or something, then it might get banged enough to, to take away the protection on the, on the um, motherboard, and then you create a sort of circuit. serious. Ah, this is a bit, it's a bit old my ratchet. So, oh, we need to get rid of this one. So that's gone now. <laughs> Not that much thread on that one. So, so okay. So that's that. So we put the back plate in, we checked the um, situation with the standoffs you might need to add or remove depending on what specific motherboard you have. Uh, we pre-inserted it and it's empty so we know that it, actually it can be easier to work on this if you if you turn this um, flat on the, on the on the table. So we might actually do that when we've actually populated the motherboard then I might actually turn this so it's lying down. You can do it with this case and then I could just insert the motherboard from the top and it might might be the position we'll have it in for the rest of the install. It's just I thought it would be 
in in the case of being able to take video, this is actually a very good position to have it. So now we need to position the camera better for being able to show the motherboard population and I'll just try and zoom in a little bit more so something like that and then it's an issue of what to start with I think I will start with putting the processor in because then we don't get dust and stuff on this the AMD um, sockets don't come with a protective cover and the, the Intel motherboards do so it's, um, and um, the uh, you need to look at the manual if you're using a stock um, AMD out of the box cooler then these here are not needed we're going to have to disassemble those, take them away, and that's in the, actually in the manual. There's very many different ways to connect a cooler and CPU combination. It's, it is advisable to actually look in the manual to see what specific variant you have for your specific cooler. So they say type 1 and type 2 and I have the type 2 so that then you have to distance, you have to take away those two so what we're going to do is we're going to take those away and then um, put the processor in and drink some more cold coffee back my good and trusted old toolkit. Let's hope that it's visible enough. gets out of frame. Yeah. Just have a little bit of a close-up pitch. We need to take away four screws. with the cooler solution that I have then this is not needed. Ow! Drop the screw. Pick that up later. Okay, then we need to go and get the processor. So, anyway, here we have the processor.
my new four-legged assistants knocked over the um, studio lamp and it fell right on top of the <laughs> process. But it seems to have, the packaging seems to have saved it. So if I have a problem installing it, then we'll know why. carefully as we can. And then we're looking for the indicator of which way around it goes. Okay, here's a like the rectangular dot here. this golden golden one here. Now we should just be able to and it's a zero force insertion socket so you should not need to use any pressure putting this in. If you feel there is pressure that you needed to get this flat then something is very wrong. So this just drops in and the pro processor is actually very heavy so it should it will just suck in. And then once you put it there, then usually, uh, I usually hold it here just to make sure it doesn't jump around and then we put, the, put this flip thing in lock in place and make sure that it's actually locked. So that's done. So in theory now we have a processor on the motherboard. Just a good first step I suppose. And um, then it's of course the option what what one want to install next. And it's a little bit up to what one what one feels like doing. Uh, I think I'll actually put the cooler on next. So I'm using the stock air cooler. And then this comes with um, thermal paste already applied, but I'm going to actually um, jump forward in the video and I'm going to clean this thermal paste. Or actually, I don't know, it looks pretty good. I have many debates on the internet if one should use the actual stock, but this looks like it's actually in good shape. This factory applied thermal paste, so I think I'm actually going to use it as is. And let's see if there will be a... Where's the fan headers are on that side, so... so we need to put the plate back. The plate fell down. Yeah, this is the back plate for actually good that it came off, now we can show it. This is the back plate for coolers. So we need to put it back underneath the motherboard. Seems some of the motherboards come with this come with a solution where this is actually fixed to the motherboard so it actually doesn't fall out while you're working on it. And then some solutions don't. Let's have a look at the manual. Let's 
if they have a preferred installation. Direction for the cooler. Okay, let's see now. Okay, we got this. Almost just to check. So, right. find the correct screwdriver. It actually looks like this. Uh, out of the box fan needs to be this way around, otherwise it's going to interfere with the potentially at least interfere with the memory slot. Just reduce the risk of that. Have it this way around. So It's good to screw them across so the one doesn't screw down one end very hard. So now I've done that one, and then we do the opposite one. Then we come over here. Oops, it feels so good. Suppose that's the way it is. Oh, that's the back side. Well, that's the first time I've installed a AMD cooler solution. So. Looks straight. And it's going to be screwed down into the into the case. So I think it should be alright. Okay, I think we should plug in the fan header here. Let's check the motherboard. 
See where this is supposed to go. That doesn't make any sense. That's sort of the corner of it. Okay, it's a generic picture for plugging in the fan, so then one actually has to look at the motherboard layout. Which then? Should take. So rip. Okay, not the most easiest thing to understand. Two for everything, but according to what I'm going to see on, it should be. organization of the cable a bit later I think. So looks like that. Oops. Put it in my hand to stack. Okay, so that's the um hopefully the cooler solution in place. It looks okay. And the fan is plugged in. I did have a little bit of a problem with this corner screw, but I think it went in okay now. And it looks even at the bottom if one has a look at how far the screws have gone in. So now I think I'll put the memory in. Start again. Um, 
important to find out which slots should be populated. With the recommended memory configurations. Take a look. Uh -huh, so that's the two dark colored slots that need to be populated. To let the dual channel work. In. Make sure the latch is in place. So we open the latch, take the narrow module, and as carefully as possible out of its box. It gets stuck in the plastic. It's a bit of fibbling. But anyway, just checking that the module is in here. So it should be okay. And the two correct channels are activated, so I can expand the memory if needed. Two more. So that's that. To um, put the motherboard in the case. These tools. I think I will actually lay down the case. see that much of the, the motherboard installation. Uh, maybe we have to move the camera just a bit. I move it over here. And then we come over here. Better than that. Let's see. Oh. I lift off the camera. So we'll lift it up and then we'll turn it down. Oh, now I'm getting blinded by the lights I have here. I can't actually see. That's a good enough view for now.
Yeah, that's just to be able to see how it's going to be positioned. So I'm going to take this and try and carefully position it on the And it's always a bit tricky to get it pressed into place because this has some aluminium folio on it. See, if I can see. So it's here. And it's some aluminium folio that it needs to be pre compressed to get it in. Okay, so now we go for the screws. Okay, see if we got the right bit. So we can see what we're doing. I wonder if they'll be easier to get another screw in first, maybe that one. really see what's covered by the camera. You see this when I'm screwing. Well, it looks like it just on the, on the limit. Well, I mean, it's just to put the eight screws in on the designated position. It's quite easy to see where they are.
hope that exciting video. Bloopers! Yeah, well, of all the stuff I said about the back plate of trying to do it correctly, and then I did it wrong. So one of the corners of the back plate was not pressed in correctly, so I had to take the motherboard out and push the plate in so that it was fully in, and then I had to screw in the motherboard again. So, But I didn't think to make a video about it, because that was just me bungling with the small screws. But anyway, now we have it in, and we just double calculate the screws we have. So that's one there, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight. And that's how much, how many there is according to the manuals. So we should be in good shape. And um, we'll have to start plugging in some cables. I think we can start with the power. Let's see if I can get it into a relatively good angle for the, for the camera. Yeah, that should be okay. So we have the power supply here. And now we have a bunch of cables. And we are going to need let's see if I can find the right one. Nope. That one looks CPU, yes, that sounds promising. And then we need this one. Rest of the pack away. Now I will, what I'll do now is that we'll just put the cables approximately in place. And then I'll do the cable management later. So okay, so this is the cable for the motherboard main ATX power, and um, this is according to the original standard, so nothing amazing there. It's just this, the, if, if you've really been dealing with PCs for a long time, then you have more connectors on this one now for most modern CPUs, they need more power. So, we shall see. Mm. It should be those two. And the first one we should plug in into there. It's really working black against black, it's just awful. It's not easy. And then put this one, it's going to go. Uh, oh, that's 24 pin ATX, it should be okay. Why am I having a problem plugging that in? Oh, I'm going to. There, I'm going to use my big headlight so that I can actually see what's going on. Just believe me, black against ah now it went it. It was just not squared off. Okay, so that's good there. And then we need CPU. So that's 
it's up in this region. And there are two eight pin. seems to make a difference what one which one one puts in which so it looks like according to the spacing it should be this one that should go into the power supply and then there's two of these eight connectors but since I have a motherboard that only needs one it only needs one Okay, so here's the big 24. So I think we'll bring that through first. And then that is going to want to curl. Oh, I suppose we just have to pull it through. Seems to be working okay. Where is the twin? The CPU auxiliary power is up there, so you gotta love this case because what I can do now is just to bring it through here, sneak it sneakily. get in so it clicks. And I can just lay there for a while. Actually with this case you can skip this. <laughs> you can get away with very little of doing cable management because you can just make the cables disappear into the back. But I will try and um, tidy it up a bit. Um, okay so what should we put in Next, I think I'll try for the, the USB front end connector. And this there was actually I would like to reposition my light just a little bit. So just to get a little bit more light into the case because it's so dark. So we had a very odd case where we have a 24 pin here and then we have I think one down there and I just have to double check the manual which one was which. Let's see. Eight, four, six. There's two of them, so which? Okay, which one was this? 
just checking which one we should actually use. So there's actually two of those ports. So which one are we supposed to use? I really can't figure out which. I mean, they are just for ports, so I suppose I don't know if it really matters. It's hard to read from the manual. If it, it just says that it's for rear panel and um, front panel expansion, so they look with them down to them. Ah, so I say we use this one now. signal interference from the power. The notch is there, so we need to come in and put it like that. And it just disappears into the back nicely. And then we have audio. Audio levels down here. Ah, it's just darkness again. And to I need to have, have the light again. <laughs> oh, it'll show up in the video, okay. Because really, for me, it's very dark. input there. Oh, I'm going to sneak that through. Let's see if I can. Sneak it through there. Let's hope it'll be long enough. Now then, the problem is to get that the right way around. Well, I think it must be keyed. It's, yes, it's keyed. Okay, so there's no... Can't get it the wrong way around. Just see which side is key, so it's there, and then we just plug it in there. So, that's the audio taken care of, and then we cannot use the, yeah, and we couldn't use the uh, USB Type C connector. So now we have to put in the Control cable. Let's 
system terminal connections. Down there. Oh, yuck. If it takes too long me to fiddle those in, then I might actually just jump over it on this video. Because this is just fiddling with a cable to get the uh, cable. Not that fun to watch. And now one sees that one should have probably installed this fan after. After one's put in the control cabling. Anyway, let's try and get this done. And, uh, power switch. It's in the manual. Not the way it should be connected. It is a bit fiddly to get it. HD hard drive status lamp. Now we've got a reset button on the front panel. It's a pity. It's funny that it actually doesn't come with a reset button. Ah, there's lots of computers that don't know this. So now let's see. Now we just need to connect in. Oh, that should be okay now. Oh, let me sneak the cable out of the way of the fan. And then it comes into the back there, so that's okay. So, now we have the main board power. The um, ATX connector, power supply standard, and then we have the 8-pin extra auxiliary for the processor to run. I've connected in USB 3.0 front panel. We have the audio for the front panel, and we have the yeah, a few main. It's mainly the power switch, which is the uh, most critical. And then the remaining is a few fan. Okay, well, we need to get the fans in place. I have to actually take a pause. Pause and look at the manual. Um, well here it has the instructions. So we have three fans, and I thought I'd designate this one one, two, and then three. So let's start with fan one, which is 
سی See if I put some super light on it. Oh my god, is it that small? I must say the markings are crap on the motherboard. So, oh, okay, we don't go by the markings on the board itself. We we will work from the target. So, okay, so let's see. I'll do the cable management later. Let's get them plugged into the right. feed the rest of this cable down into the... It's a pity it's right in the middle of the motherboard. I'll just ruin it somehow. Ah, clean it up later. The main thing is to get these um, cables on, I think, for now. Disappear into there. Bring it through here. Well, that's one too. And again, clean it off a bit later. And then we have Still don't like that. Why don't why did they put a set? Okay, but it's probably for a back fan, so then it could come like down there, not like here. So it's gonna be a bit tricky to root. I think I'll just flatten it coming over here and then it could disappear. Yeah, I'll probably get it pushed through there and then yeah, 
I don't have to disconnect it and redo it. But I can clean up there. Now then let's see the third fan. Which is up here. motherboards to with the fan connectors in various different places they don't really know what case is going to be used try and make the average I suppose fans in there. As I said, um, minus a bit of cleanup, it's actually done now. So this is where I'm going to end this episode. I mean, if you like this video, um, you, know, you could think of subscribing and hit the bell if you want to get notified because this is going to, of course, continue. It's not a working computer as it is now. And, um, yeah. We'll see you in the next one.